And we are recording again. Yay! Okay. Start the intro, Daryl. Well, that technically was the intro, but welcome back, everybody. Yes, welcome back. Yes, this is just me and Xander here, even though I still want to refer to him as Kime, as we are going to do um, a basic overview of what's coming out in the new Yu-Gi-Oh! set, Judgment of the Light. This will incredibly date this video, I don't care. So, um, for those of you that are unaware, Judgment of the Light is supposedly going to be bringing back a lot of, old, a lot of older uh, cards and archetypes. Uh, specifically, it is targeted at Synchros, which we haven't really seen that much of since Ixies came out, and, and uh, spoilers, I don't really think that this will actually change anything. And um, in particular, there are a bunch of new Archfiends coming out, but we won't be getting to them until way later. But, that aside, we also have support for, uh, for new, well, we have new archetypes coming out and support for the new newly released archetypes, such as the uh, Zeal Weapons and Fire Fists, and I'm not sure if he dropped or not. No, I'm still here. Okay, then. So, shall we get started with our first card? Yes. We are working with the with the OCG list right now, by the way, so the TCG exclusives and sneak peek card will not be covered in this. Yes. Okay. Uh, so our first our first weapon our first card that we are looking at is the Dark Zeal Weapon Chimera Cloth. Okay, this is a dark attribute fiend effect one star zero attack zero defense monster. If you if that's the way you're gonna treat this mark, we'll be here for four hours. No. We're just going to give our basic opinions on, on these particular cards. We're not going to give, you know, expi explicit stats and effects. We will po I will post the cheat sheet that we are using because I can do that. Okay. Now, um, Mark, do you have any actual, or Xander, rather, and or Kime, whatever the fuck your name actually is today, um, <laughs> do you have any experience with the Zeal weapons? Um, yes, I've, I've played them a little bit. On, uh, against them a little bit on Dan. I think it's a little bit bullshit that only you, you only Utopia's getting getting cards that are specifically supporting for him. Like he's he's not the only Chaos monster. Out. Like the only Chaos X Y Z we have Shark Drake too, and he's the only one getting support equips. Well, there is a reason in that, and they do explain a, that a little bit in the show. <laughs> At least I hope they do. I haven't actually wa bothered watching Zeal. But, yeah, uh, yeah Utopia is supposed to be the only one with Zeal weapons. We're not sure why. That's gay. But, um, I find this card to be a little bit interesting. It, it remind, it's got effects that remind me of Naga a little bit. Mm, the Reptilian Naga, for those of you wondering. I don't see the point in it. Uh, well, I kind of see the point in it. The first attack doesn't kill it. But, uh, you can swing in with Utopia Ray. And then the the monster becomes zero in that way. How does that work? Uh, okay, simple, yeah. You know. Um, okay, you swing in with Utopia Ray. It isn't destroyed because of Chimera Cloth. And then the opponent's monster attacks become zero, becomes zero, and then you attack it again. Mm -hmm. It's it's an interesting effect, really. I actually think it's a pretty interesting effect too, but while you see similarities to a Reptilian Naga, I see similarities to Mini Guts in particular. Yeah, I see some similarities in the Mini Guts. The only difference though is Mini Guts deals you the mo uh, your po destroyed monsters attack points and battle damage. Burn damage. Burn damage. Whereas th this, you just straight up swing over it. Right. Alright, and with that, we have pretty much covered our uh, basic thoughts on Chimera Cloth. It has, it has a bunch of cool uses, but sadly, almost all of them are depending on having out C C39. Next up, however, we have V Salamander, yet another Zeal weapon. My, my first thoughts on this is I like the fact that, that they're, they're keeping different... At, uh, a big... Uh, something that I could see being a big issue, though, for this is you have to bring out the the equips equips uh first before equipping them and that the big issue here is th this is really susceptible to I think it's goes and match mm, uh yes actually goes and match because they're all different types well attributes rather attributes sorry uh but actually uh goes and match isn't seeing a lot of play currently because well 
everyone uh, everyone that is running a, a specific attribute is pretty much running only that attribute. So uh, it's not even a, a good anti-meta pick right now. Uh, I actually really like V Salamander specifically because it's first effect. Uh, giving it the ability to special summon a Utopia monster from your graveyard, regardless of which one it, it, it is. Yeah, but th this really, I don't fully know the, the effect of Utopia Ray, but the the issue I see with this is is if Utopia Ray's effect is anything like the traditional Utopia, it's compl that effect is completely useless. Because, uh, you do because, realize it's a Raigeki with huge burn damage, right? <laughs> Well, okay, I, I can see that, but it's not going to stay out for long unless this card has an effect that makes it so it's not uh, the a cryptid monster is destroyed because of Utopia's effect. When you bring it back, it's going to have no XYZ materials, and uh, if you attack into Utopia while it has no XYZ materials, it instantly dies. Or you could recall that C39 can be SS from Utopia just using Utopia. Okay, yeah, I guess... I guess you have a point there. No, uh, this set also introduces us. Well, maybe not introduces, but has uh, another of the rank up spell cards, which we'll be getting to later. And that's how you're really supposed to try and use a V Salamander with Utopia Ray V. Salamander seems a bit evil. If if your opponent's rocking a, a five field monster slot, they're going to lose all of their field advantage and most, uh, uh, more than half of their life points on top of that. Yes. Just that single effect. So that's kind of... That, that, I could see that being a game winner. Yes. Hence why uh, it's a uh, Utopia Ray victory. Anyway, uh, next we have Prevent Tomato. Now this card I very much enjoy because it, it reminds me of uh, what is it? Damage Eater from earl the earlier set Duelist Revolution. I can definitely see that, although I personally think it reminds me a lot more of Hain Wada. Uh, I would say it reminds me of Hain Wada, except for Hain Wada, it's just like Karibo, isn't it, where you discard it? Yeah. See, Damage Eater is just like this card because you remove it from play. You banish it, and then it blocks the damage. Right. So, it's basically a, a newer set version of uh, Damage Eater. Right. Mm. Which is, it, it's really nice to see more than one thing that blocks effect damage, because one of the more annoying decks in, in the format right now is uh, Electrum OTK. No. Matter of fact, dude, Electrum OTK is used by rogue players. That's about it. I know, but it... it being that Electrum OTK it only needs two cards to OTK, and more often than, than less, your opponent is going to have both of those cards in his first hand. Something, well, really, that doesn't, this doesn't save you unless you first turn, you know, gets, uh, you find some way to get this in your graveyard first turn. But it would, it's nice for those people that, that you know, try to black ship of corn for victory. Or a uh, or Gaga Cowboy. Oh, Cowboy, you're awesome. Cowboy, I, I've, I've seen more deaths to Cowboy than I have Black Ship, but then again, I see Cowboy played more often than Black Ship. Right. Alright, next up, we have Magic Recycler. Okay, Magic Recycler. He's got a trigger effect, that's nice. Yes. All right, I'll I'll start off then. This card is specifically meant to aid spell books, and specifically because of that, I already don't like him. I personally think that spell books don't need any more goddamn support. Although later on, I think we'll actually come across one of their new newer monsters. Actually, I don't think it's in this set. I think it's a Japan promo thing. However, Magic Recycler um, will not will probably not see any real play in spell in spell books because. They already have all the all that they need to uh, you know do anything that they really want. I I could see this being a a nice aid for for other decks too. I could see somebody using it for Pot of Avarice to recycle their Avarice back into their deck after they've used it, or if they accidentally milled their Avarice because they're running a mill build, they can they can uh, use Magic Recycler to bring their Avarice back to their deck. Yeah, but it puts it at the bottom of the deck. Unless you're going to be searching all the damn time, it doesn't really help you. Still, a lot of decks, a lot of decks nowadays search. So, 
I could see it getting shuffled back into the deck. I I mean, having the option to have a, a second activation on Pot of Avarice is nice. Indeed it is. But um, I don't see it really helping out anyone other than Spellbooks. But that's just me. The, the, it's going to help Spellbooks bigger, most more often than anything else, but... Like like you said, I also don't see it seeing too much play. It's it's too much of a liability, if All right. anything. Alright, next up we have Ixie's Agent. Probably. Anyway, Ixie's Agent is another Utopia support card. I'm okay with Utopia getting all the support because, you know, he's pretty much Dark Magician and uh Stardust <coughs> Dragon and uh Elemental Hero Neos. I'm okay with him getting this much support. What I don't like is ha having him with all these different goddamn forms. Dark Magician already has too many forms. Stardust Dragon has too many damn forms. Neos has the most forms out of anybody, and Utopia is slowly climbing up there to have them as many forms as Dark Magician does. I I like to see I like to see you t uh, unlike most decks. I like to see the big big you know cover card actually get something that that you know, makes him useful. Because if you recall, a lot of the cover cards don't really see play. Uh, yeah, but that's because they're all, they're, they're all incredibly gimmick, gimmicky and hard to use. However, Ixie's Agent will never see play, specifically because it's a once-per-duel effect that you can, on, that you can only use as, a, as an Ixie's material for Utopia. I could see it getting play on on people trying to fun build Utopia. If people want to build the Zeal Weapons decks, Ixie's Agent is still more of a dead draw than anything else. He needs to be in your graveyard to use him as an effect, and Utopia really doesn't have the need for extra ma Ixie's materials. Yeah, I guess you got a point there. I don't really have much of an opinion on, on him, all to be honest. His stats are okay otherwise, but... He's supposed to be using a specific deck that's gonna just just totally ignore him. This this stuff I've never heard of. Our next set is Super Defense. Yes, this is one of the new archetypes that we're getting. The Super Defense Robos. Actually, I like these guys as boss, but the individual cards seem to be pretty lacking. Which is actually what a major complaint that I have with the most of the set. Our archetype single cards are mostly lacking in this set. In this set, and even though our bosses are pretty cool. They're not nearly as powerful as, say, even Heart Earth Dragon was. Uh, Gurdet uh, seems to forget the fact that, uh, that Heart Earth has never gotten play. That's not entirely true. When Heart Earth, when Heart Earth was first being released, everyone, in, uh, a few people, rather, were trying to figure out ways to bring out both Heart Earth and Her Heart Earth Dragon. They stopped doing it shortly, but, you know, they tried. Oh, and apparently Orbital 7, which is a single card that I think it's Kite, either Kite or Shark uses. I'm not entirely sure which. I'm pretty sure it's Kite, though. And um, he has an entire archetype now. This card is normal summon. You can special summon one Orbital 7 and one Orbital Defense Robo from your hand. Once per turn, you can target one Orbital 7. I could see the, this Robo Elephant being useful for something. Uh, admittedly, yes. The Elephant and the Leo are actually pretty cool. But, um... I mean, he, he's a good quick way to get into rank 8. If there are any that he can... By the way, Mark, you out. skipped over Leo. Did I? Yeah. Damn it. Also, how are you going to normal summon Elephant? Yeah, you got a point. Is, and Elephant's major problem is that it has to be used for an Ixies of a machine monster. That's not that bad, mind you, considering he's an 8, and most of our 8s are, you know, either machines are, are either machines or dragons, but... No, I looked at Leo, I just didn't have too much to say about him. He doesn't really seem all that meh. Alright, and then we have Monkey, Super Defense Robo Monkey. He He's just to bring stuff back from the grave, basically. Which that's, is that's, really that's, powerful when you want to think about it. Yeah, but like you said, this deck doesn't really have anything really going for it. Yeah, there's nothing really broken here. They have they have recycling and bringing back, but that's all of the, that we see of them, especially since there's only four cards in the archetype right now. That's a thing that I'm going to be very, very iffy about the whole time we're here. 
we get a bunch of really small condensed archetypes in this set for some reason, and I can't figure out what the hell to do with them. Like our next set, the Holy Lightnings. Yes, the Holy Lightning set, which have incredibly basic, if albeit really cool, effects. Okay, so Wing Wing is just another marauding captain. Uh, marauding. It's an archetype specific marauding captain. Well, no, this is a little bit better because th this doesn't have a level require a uh, level specific, so you can special summon anything from it. Yeah, the, all the Holy Lightning cards spoilers are only level four. Oh, that's disgusting, then. Uh, for example, books. Okay. Yeah, I I could see books being used, but the problem is it's from your the special summon on books is from your hand as opposed to your deck. It's a powered down summoner monk. Uh, meh. And then and we it, have sword. And then it doesn't give it doesn't get that safety or that safety precaution that summoner monk's effect gives it either. Right. And then we have Holy Lightning Sword, which, although pretty damn cool, has the same problem. Yeah, if you're going to be playing this particular archetype, you can expect your hand size to be minuscule. The way I see this, this is probably... I could see this being run together with something, not alone, though. Yeah, because there's at just least, not enough here. There really isn't. At least until... Uh, I can see it getting run by itself if we get more support for it later on in the sets. Yeah. I doubt it, but... Maybe. Just no, maybe. no, no, don't doubt it so hard, because if you remember, Fire Fist started off as only having four cards in it. Yes. Well, four monsters, at least. Now we get to the Umbrals. Yes, the Umbrals, who... And all, everyone is actually kind of freaking out about these guys, and I have to say, I actually really do like... Uh, I do like this archetype where it's going. It's pretty swarmy at the moment, but... Uh, you know, given how uh, swarmy the rest of our archetypes have been recently, I'm okay with that. I I can I could see you using this in your Bosky build, Daryl or Gurdat. <clears throat> yes, I could definitely use Ghoul. I could definitely use Ghoul in a Vosky build. I really don't think I would, mind you, because well, Umbrals are supposed to be used pretty much on their own. If you actually look at Unform and Will of the Wisp, they uh, pretty much uh, support themselves and nothing else. When this card attacks and destroys, cut off. Okay. I the thing I like about about the uh, the two you just mentioned because I just lost my train of thought. Uniform, or at least with uniform, it doesn't have that restriction that it can't special summon itself. No, which is actually a really really powerful thing. Being able to SS two more unforms is pretty powerful. And uh, Will, Will of the Wisp is actually pretty powerful, too, as long as you're willing to pay for it. Yeah, Will of the Wisp looks cool. It, it's nice to see to see some stuff that you can splash into random decks to add a little bit more playability, a little bit more fun in, into it. But I don't see... So far, I haven't seen any of these builds that are... or any of these cards that are really going to get much play. Well then, how about our next card, Schwarzschild, the Limit Dragon? Schwarzschild, ooh, he's a uh, eight star two thousand. Okay, yeah, I can see this guy getting play solely because most of the monsters your opponent's gonna have out are two thousand or more. Right, and let's not forget that he pairs very, very nicely with the other with the other two uh, space dragons that we have, uh, Raid, um, Radial and. I forget the other one. You you're talking about the guys that that build upon themselves, right? Yeah. One one makes itself an eight star and the other one specials when there's an eight star out. Yep. See if we had a triple eight or uh, do we have any way uh, do we required rank three XYZs? Yes. Any of them that are, you know, busted? Neo Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon. Oh the anti XEs to end all anti XEs. Hello, Neil. I could see him getting a little bit of play then, just because that those those three work too well on next to each other. Mm. All right. Next up, however, we have the, the War, War God Gods. archetypes. Oh God, these are underwhelming. Yeah, quite a bit actually. 
Now Yamato is actually pretty cool, but he's supposed to be as he's the as he's the card that everyone else is centered around. However, so, Yamato's biggest drawback is his Highlander is his Highlander clause. Do you, do you, do any of these any of these archetypes actually have boss monsters? Yes, all of these archetypes have boss monsters. We just haven't got to them yet, right? Yeah. All of their boss monsters are Ixies monsters, which I need to explain right now is a trend that I really hope goes away soon. Uh, any thoughts on Yamato? Oh, uh, Yamato is kind of cool. I don't like I said, I don't see any of this getting real play unless you're playing for fun. I just don't see. I mean, I don't like the fact that you have to uh, that ev everything's building on just Yamato. I'll grant that, yeah. Y y Yamato being the key card when he is mostly lackluster is not that good of an idea. But, you know, it's it's lore it's lore intensive, so do what you can, you know? Alright, next up we have the War God Vessels, which include Mirakumo. Mirakumo I see completely useless. Uh not completely useless. I I just don't like his conditions for effect. Yeah, you have to have an archetype specific beast warrior type. Thankfully, Yamato does match up with that. As does uh, the boss monster Susano. Both you have to have both you have to have Susano or or Yamato in control on the field. And then on top of that, you have to have this guy in the graveyard. I'll grant that, yeah, especially since it's a once per turn effect. If you could use it multiple times a turn, it would actually be okay, given those restrictions, but a once per turn has its downsides. Yeah, definitely. Next up, we have Hetsuka. Uh, not you remember even when close. these used to be trap cards, Mark? Um. You remember when being a counter trap card meant something? Oh, uh, I miss my Dark Illusion. Hello, lack of trap cards. Okay, to specify, Hetsuka allows uh, Hetsuka allows you to banish him from the graveyard to negate a card effect that targets a war god monster you control. I bring this up because Dark Illusion, Phoenix Chain, Effect Veiler, all of these awesome cards... Wait, Effect Veiler is a monster. Yeah, we've been going at this route for a long damn time. Oy. I don't... I. I don't like having monsters being used as traps. It just feels wrong to me since I've been playing the game for so damn long. Yeah, you 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 like your solemn judgment that you almost never use. Hey, I don't ever use my solemn judgment because I play Mega Band, GTFO. Anyway, next up we have Taruta. Please tell me half these vessels aren't blocks for. Uh, please tell me those these are a herald of of light for fucking war gods. I hope no. not. What would make you think that these would be equivalent to heralds? Although Tartu, uh, Taruda is actually pretty cool. With 2,000 defense, he can actually take a couple of hits and still, you know, uh, be out on the field for a while. Plus, he makes it that other mon other beast, uh, beast, beast warrior, and wing beast monsters you control can't be destroyed by battle. And since battle damage and battle destruction is how most people retain their card advantage nowadays. You know, it makes him pretty good. The downside is, being only at 2,000 defense, he gets run over by a lot of really common shit. Yes, like, you know, that, that fucking Leviathan dragon everybody first turns. With their fucking tour guides. Yep. Leviathan I can, dragon. I can see Taruta being played outside of the War God build. I really can. Because that 2,000 defense paired with a paired with a small buff makes him very difficult to run over and the inability to destroy uh, your your specific type monsters by battle is a very, very good thing. Inside the War God deck, though, I don't really see the point in it because... Uh... Alright, next up That's we have Habakiri. That's pretty cool. Habakiri reminds me of... Uh... Uh, Habakiri reminds me of uh, Kalu. Only he's a better Kalut. Um, yes, actually, he is in fact a better Kalut for the most part. Here's the thing: Habakiri is an archetype-specific honest. It's pretty much what he is. Uh, not necessarily, because this is doubling original attack. Yes, it doubles the original attack of the monster that Habakiri targets, which will be your war god. The problem the is, other than Susano and uh, Yamato. 
there's not really much that you can target with him. Yeah, he is la- he is severely lacking targets, and that's not going to change based on what we've seen from the archetype. Yeah, but that can be a game when if somebody goes in to, goes in with low life points to swing over Susano to try and get him off the field, and you you Habakiri it. Yeah, I could definitely see Habakiri seeing play in the deck at three. I just don't. I just don't like Yamato's Highlander effect. That's one of the big drawbacks with this deck that I'm seeing. All Orochi. right, next up we have War God Vessel Orochi, which makes no sense given the lore that they're going with. But oh well. Orochi's got a very a, interesting effect. All in all, you combo Orochi with, with uh, you Orochi to uh, you Orochi Susano and then drop a Havakiri. That's not nice. It's not okay. nice, but you got to remember: is that four thousand four eight hundred damage worth the minus three there? Um, since more often than less, you will kill them with that. Yes, I think it's worth the minus three. <sighs> Honestly, if it is, if it is a game-winning play, then yeah, I'll go with that. But it's oh. a that's a very specific hand that you've got to open with. Yeah, I know, but still, that that's. That that takes the uh, people's attempts to heroic champion you uh, Excalibur to an extreme. Ah, eh, kind of. All right, now for those of you that don't know, last set in Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, we uh, got these things called the Mecha Phantom Beasts. We're getting more support for them. Let's go. I'm not really interested in these. In all honesty. Well, that's kind of sad, because you, cause you happen to really enjoy uh, synchros, don't you? Yeah, but I don't really... Meh. Mm. Kurt is sent to the graveyard for a synchro summon. See, the issue is I'm not a big machine monster kind of guy. I I, I, see, I, I'll, I could see that, yeah. <laughs> that's my biggest issue. The, yes, this is synchro support, but I almost never run machines. The only relatable machine that you can see in most of my builds is a Cyber Dragon that I throw in there for a quick special. That's about it as far as machines go. Mm. The thing that I really like about this, however, is that he's a level 1 tuner. And remember, you don't have to sink him for a machine-type monster. Yeah, but his effect is most most useful for machine-type monsters. Mm, true. You you don't get his full power. Uh, you don't get the full advantage of his effect if it's not a machine. True, but eh, it has its ups and downs. All right, we'll leave it at that. I mean, I I like it being a one star because it, it, you can normal you can normal summon that sink in with that and not waste a veiler like most people do. A lot a lot of people will go in and normal summon veiler for that quick one star synchro. A quick synchroing with a one star, and that saves you the trouble of using your Baylor, I suppose. So that's always nice. Mm, shall we continue on then, Mr. Xander? Yeah, this next card I don't like already. Uh, Blue and Palace. For the record, the Mecha Phantom Beasts are all based on real planes. For the record, I don't like this card at all. I hate it, actually. And why would that be? Because it's it's really limited. It's limiting you to only be able to special su- uh, synchro summon a machine type monster. True, and it also has the eff- and it also has the clause that you can only use other Mecha Phantom Beasts as materials. But where where it shines is that it allows you to use Mecha Phantom Beasts from your hand. Yeah, that, that's nice. But again, that that whole machine type monster makes it almost useless for any deck that isn't Mecha Phantom Beast. Uh, you're forgetting about Karakuri's again. Yeah, but if Karakuri's really need a synchro, they can. They don't need the Mecha Phantom Beasts. True, true. Karakuri's have been strong by themselves for a very long time. I don't think they... Well, the extra support might be nice, I'm just saying they don't... If Karakuri's really needed synchro material, uh, they wouldn't be the Mecha Phantom Beasts that they turned to. Right. All right. Next up Colt is Wing. Mecha Phantom Beast Colt Wing. Hello, helicopters. Uh, this card is special summon. If you control two or more Mecha Phantom Beasts. Okay, that's more token support, which is, which is nice, because 
The thing I, I really like about the Mecha Phantom Beast is they use tokens as a protection. Yes. However, it makes, them exp it makes them especially annoying to try and get rid of because their tokens literally protect themselves. Yes, I know. Now, Coltwing's secondary effect, the, uh, the attributing two tokens to destroy and banish something, I don't actually like that. Because this, so this whole deck has been about using your tokens to generate uh, card advantage. And Coltwing doesn't seem to really get that. I, I like it in that sense that, you know, maybe you have a Drago Sack or two on the field that you can just bring those tokens back. And you've got something that, that's, you know, really dangerous on the field, like a BLS that you could take out with it. Yeah, but you got a special summon it. And, um... I don't know. It's definitely an okay card. It's just that it's meant for bursting, and I don't think that this deck was meant to go burst. I, to be honest, I'm looking at a lot of these Mecha Phantom Beast effects, I really don't like them. Mm. I, I had a negative effect, a negative opinion in coming into them, but that just made it even worse. All right. Next up is Harriard. Harriard, rather. Get it? It's a Harrier. Like yes. a carrier jet? I got it. Um, oh, that's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to use Harry, uh, Harrier, Harryard with uh, Coltwing, and then all of a sudden you have five monsters on the field. That's not bad at all, actually. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't have too much to commentate on, on the Mecha Phantom Beast, because like I said, I've never really been a machine kind of guy. I actually really like the Mecha Phantom Beast because I thought when they were first coming out it would be an expansion of the Phantom Beast archetype. And then they were something totally different. Okay, now we get into the Fire Fist. Well, thankfully, Mark, we're only getting a few Fire Fist support cards this time, and they're not actually that good from what I've seen. First off is Boar. Yeah, Boar is incredibly limited. Yep, fire, fire attribute. Well, most fire fists are fire attributes, so that's not really that limited, in all honesty. True, but but where Boar is going to get run is the fact that it's a recruiter. Yeah, I really don't like the fire fist archetype, in all honesty. Yes, I know, and I'm not entirely sure why. I just don't think it takes that much skill to run, in all honesty. But they do, damn it! They do... Um, Boar will probably be, be running the Fire Fist archetype, because aside from the new stuff with Spirit and Chicken, they haven't really been getting that good of monsters, per se. Whereas Boar is, is a monster that they really did need. Well, they didn't need, per se, but it will help speed them up greatly. They did need a recruiter. Now they've got one. Alright, next up we're looking at the uh, Fire Fist Deer. Deer is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, yes, actually. I do like Deer, be being with its 2,000 defense pretty much ensuring that it's going to get destroyed by a card effect, which means it also is a technically a recruiter, but it's supposed to be used as a synchro material. And as far as we've seen, so far at least, Brotherhood, the Fire Fist don't really have their own synchro yet. Now, mind you, there is a synchro Fire Fist in this, in this set, so we're, we're okay, we're okay, but we haven't actually gotten to it yet. Um, otherwise, yeah, deer might be run at one or two, but, meh. Oh, look, more prophecy crap. Yes, we're also getting another, uh, prophecy monster, at least. World of Prophecy. I haven't actually looked at this thing yet, so let's see here. Of two spellcaster cart. I could see this thing being really easy to bring out. Oh, God. <laughs> Why Konami? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, this card I'm getting rid of the moment it tries to come on on the field. No. Good luck with that. Okay, for those of you that, that, that aren't looking at this with us, World of Prophecy has got a field nuke, a recycle, and a very, very easy method to special summon itself. Um, I already fucking hate this card. Not Mind you, Prophecies not did not need a field nuke, so I don't think this is going to see that much play. I think it's going to be at one, maybe two, in a dedicated Prophecy build. That being said, it's going to annoy the piss out of me when people start trying to use him on me again. Ugh. Yeah, he, he's on 100 attack less JD. 
that no, recycles. he's not. He's not even. He's not even as bad as JD is. Okay, JD has several different costs that make him very difficult to bring out and keep. World of Prophecy has almost none of those costs, especially when you consider it can still be freaking normal summoned. And then on top of this fact, it leaves you complete. Uh, it leaves you easily open to bring out a double priestess on your next turn. Or this turn, technically. No, sure, you can't, you can't, sure, you can't SS the turn you activate the effect, but then you're not going to SS them on your own turn. If you know what you're doing, you're going to SS them on your opponent's turn in the mirror match. Can you SS on your opponent's turn? Yes. Both, uh, temp both Temperance and, uh, and Judgment Day can easily bring this guy out. That's just wrong. And then, he's a 29 and then she's a 2,900 on top of that, so she's a bitch to attack over. Great, just great. More at least this is an actual boss monster instead of a quick play spell instead of a boss monster disguised as a quick play spell. Ugh. Yes, at least this is a legit boss monster. Priestess is more of a field destroyer than anything. Yeah, and she even she, she qualifies really as a boss. I don't even consider that her Oh great, we're finally getting Archfiend support for the And I the love it. They're horrible monsters, and all things considered. This archetype is still going freaking nowhere, but I love that we're actually getting Chess Archfiend support. Uh, we have Trick Archfiend, which is their Sangan. That's that's all it does. Aww. Uh, that made me kind of sad. Sadly, you can only use Trick Archfiend's effect once per turn. I'm not entirely sure why they felt the need to add that restriction, as it, it limits her even more. But that's all we got for Trick Archfiend. Archfiend Cavalry, on the other hand... Mind you, I'm new to most of this stuff. It's nice to see Archfiend support, though. Yes, Even it though, is. Even though, like Godet like said, we're going to get almost no play of it. Yeah. At all. Archfiend Cavalry's got some pretty decent stats, with it being level 4, dark, and 1900. But the problem is, he has to be destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard to get his effect. Now, Mark, if you recall, Red Dragon Archfiend is an Archfiend monster. Yes. So... Archfiend Cavalry gets destroyed by either your or your opponent's Torrential Tribute with an RDA in the grave. RDA comes out, and then your opponent's like, why did I do that? <laughs> um, Daryl, you're forgetting something that's equally as bad. Uh, and that would be? Thought Ruler Archfiend. I'll grant Thought Ruler Archfiend is pretty cool. The problem, of course, is that Synchro's be seeing such decrease in play, especially RDA. RDA is never used ever again. I still use them on occasion. You go into Thought Ruler and Scrap Dragon and Stardust long before you go into RDA. Actually, I don't even really use my Stardust much anymore. See? I have so much negate ability between Beast and Barkeon that I don't even really need Stardust. But here, my friend, here is where we get even more lame. Chess Archfiends have a new boss monster. Yay! Yes, our poor excuse for a boss monster that nobody cares about. It is a horrible excuse for a boss monster. <laughs> One, he can be normal summoned without tributing, which would be awesome, except it cuts his attack and defense in half and he's killed during the end phase. Fuck. Plus, he makes it so that he cannot special summon monsters other than fiend type, meaning that here's your tribal boss, mo here's your tribal boss, tribal arch fiends. Except for you lose him at your end phase. If you normal summon him. Now, what? what I like about him is, is he also happens to have the uh, uh, High Priestess of Prophecy's Destruction effect. Banish an Archfiend card, not just monster, but card, and you can blow up something that your opponent controls. Or any card on the field, rather. Which is cool. The problem is, it's still a horrible boss monster that I don't want to normal summon without tributing because I won't get to keep it. Well, I mean, I suppose you could start us that effect and keep it on the field. No, but, you wouldn't be able to Stardust the effect, because if you Stardust the effect, he's destroyed, remember? Oh yeah, negate and destroy. Shit. Alright, next up, however, we have another Fiend archetype coming out, the Fascinating Fiends. I hope to God that these get, I hope to God that these actually get a name change, because Fascinating Fiend sounds incredibly lazy. And gay. Well, they're insects disguised as people. And oh, apparently yeah. they support the Trap Hole archetype. For those of you that don't know, Trap Hole is an actual archetype. Um, Atora is actually pretty awesome. Being able to activate uh, Trap Hole and other hole cards from your hand, you know, 
off, off just from your hand is actually pretty awesome. It's gonna make your BTHs more powerful. Oh yeah, I have to worry about hand fucking hand traps that are actually trap cards. Yay! Dude, what's what's the type of that? Uh, insect. Okay. That was spellcaster. I would cry. <laughs> all right. Next, we have try on the fascinating fiend. Of course, these are all called fascinating fiend. I find this entertaining that they're immune to the things that they're allowed to activate. Yes, because you know that's where they live. The whole reason the trap hole was working was because fascinating fiends were in there. Uh, I like that Tryon's got uh, has the Hanzo approach to a card design, where if he's normal summoned, you get one effect. If he's special summoned, he gets a different effect. Okay, but anyways, back to the, the preview of Judgment of Light. Yes, Kazura, the fascinating fiend. No, she looks so cute for a bellflower. Oh, what? Uh, she's a pitcher plant. That's not very nice. Let's see. Did it... If it's the hole you're going to oh, use, oh, it's the searcher. Okay, you you activate tra you activate trap hole or bottomless trap hole, and if Kazura's face up, you get to add a fascinating fiend to your hand. It's meh. It really is. Or special summon one from one fascinating monster from your deck. It's still meh. Yeah. The only special summon that you'd want to go is try on, and that's if your opponent does has got back row. Okay, that's next up is the calibrator. It's a morph of the calculator. I don't like that. I hope you know. Ooh. I like this one, actually. Uh, for for those of you not following along, the calibrator gains 300 attack per rank of each Ixies monster your opponent controls. So your opponent's got a Zen mains out, boom, calibrator is now at 2400. Really? Yeah. Wait, does it just get the does it get to the level of just the X Y Z or the materials too? No, it doesn't get the it doesn't get the level of anything, dude. It gets the ranks. It gains attack equal to the combined ranks of all Ixies monsters your opponent controls times three hundred. As such, I might run him. I might Leviathan Dragon becomes a twenty five. I've got a twenty four that I can normal summon. Come at me, bro. Oh what? look, plant! Uh, we got another boss monster for plants. Yes, it is the mirror image of Titanial. It is Thalia, pr uh, princess of cherry blossoms. I like Thalia. I like Thalia more than I like Titanial, but I'm never gonna run Thalia. Well, Thalia is more powerful than Titanial if you really think about it. Right. One, it gets bonus attack. It gets bonus attack for each plant type you control, meaning she she comes out as a twenty nine, and two. All of your plants suddenly be get uh, get immune to card uh, card destructions. Yes, titanium. Unfortunately, you have to tribute and negate a plant right. to block something. So yes, I would run Thalia. Uh, if I was still, I might with Judgment. Uh, I might switch out Titania for Thalia. Actually, nah, probably. In my build. All right. What? Next up, we have the cuteness that is Pio Kako. It's baby chicken. That's what it technically means. This Ooh. card I see it completely useless. No, it's not. Being able to SS a level five or higher tuner from your deck? Are you kidding me? Who uh, who really runs a level five or higher tuner though? You're forgetting about ally uh, ally mind. Yes, but allies get those kind of allies get no play. True, but there are a bunch of really cool tuners that you can SS that way. You might yes, be able to go into emissary of pandemonium that way, dude. Yes, but almost none of them get play. Yeah, and this card would actually help them get play. Chameleon. It's a lion chameleon. Yeah, I hate this card. I think it's completely useless. It's not completely useless. It's actually pretty cool. Thing is, or the only thing I could see it being used for would be, you know, bringing back your U-Bells. Because, yes, U-Bells. Or maybe level eaters. Flying C. Yes, uh, this was a card that uh, Loki actually uh, informed me about. Yeah, I don't like Flying Sea. I don't. No. Uh, my main argument for not liking Flying Sea, Omni Heroes will use this against you and use it against you and laugh at you for trying it. I will grant that it makes your opponent's tour guides very, 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 very wasted. But that's about all it's got on it. 
And I don't think you're going to be tributing all three of your opponent's monsters for anything, so... Nah. What do you think, Mr. Xander? Okay. That is fucking evil. It's not that evil, though. The only real use that I see for it is, you know, go, uh, stopping divas into gachis and stopping uh, tour guides into Zen mains. Um, that would rip a, or that would rip yeah, a part windups. Since windups are already ripped apart, they don't need the damage. No, well, that would rip them apart more. And they it don't would take need to be ripped apart anymore. And it would take out uh. It would also deal with with uh, Madolce's boss monster. Not really. Madolce's will say, "Oh, look! Thanks for the free monster. Now what? Can, well, now what can I do with it? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna have it attack you." At 700 attack points, Daryl. Dude, they're willing to waste the life points. That's the main problem with Flying C. It gives your monster a mon it gives your opponent a monster that can do pretty much anything except create the field condition that you know they can't Ixie summon. It can still be used for synchro material, can still be used as a fusion material, can still be sacked and can still be sacrificed for bigger monsters, and can still and can still be tributed for card effects. There's nothing really there's nothing really important going on with Flying C. Yes, stopping your opponent's Ixie summons would be very cool. If that's not all it did. This card is completely and utterly useless. Oh, Yellow Duston? Yes. Congratulations, you have met the next member of the Duston archetype. An archetype that is pretty much the Ojamas, except not. Except for the Ojamas actually have a win condition. Yeah, Yellow Dustons are just there to annoy your opponent. Yellow Duston seems retarded. And then we start getting into the boss monsters, I think. Ah uh, yes. After Yellow Dust on, we we reveal Mecha Phantom Beast Con uh, Concorruda. It's supposed to be Concord. I don't know why. I don't know why they decided to give it a stupid name. Can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. I don't like the 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 special summon effect of that. Yeah, the special summon effect is is really you know iffy, especially since it eats up all of your damn tokens. However. Making it so your tokens can't be destroyed by battle or card effects is really powerful. The problem here is that he doesn't have the na the native protection that the other Mecha Phantom Beasts have. If he did, and he granted the tokens that native protection too, yeah, he'd be absolutely busted. As such, he's mostly just meh. Alright, next up is the Fire Fist Synchro Monster, Kirin. Which is weird, because Kirin is almost usually always a lightning elemental in here. It's a fire. That's that's actually kind of cool. The loss of a hundred attack points per face up spell or trap, considering considering Fire Fist specialize in face up spell and continuous spell and traps. Yeah, but the most you're ever going to see out of it is a minus three hundred, which in some cases is really important. Yes, it would be, assuming that your three face up uh, spell and traps are not triple tanky. Here's the thing. Kirin would get massive buffs from each of the trap cards, all right? And if you've got all three of the trap cards up on the field, good on ya. He becomes a 29 and is pretty much unstoppable. But that's not how Fire Fists tend to play. I, I don't know. see Kirin getting any use at all. Yeah, it's sad to get to get new... I don't see... Uh, I see this pack being mostly useless, Daryl. As far as we've seen, yeah, the, mon the monsters lineup in here is just mostly lackluster. There are um, some pretty cool things in here, like, you know, Thalia and uh, I've seen a total. Of, I've seen a total of three things that are actually kind of dangerous in However, this set. However, we finally got the normal version of Colossus. Yay! Dill, would you like to hear the three things I find dangerous in this pack so far? Sure. Recapping on the things I think that are going to be dangerous and actually might actually get play. Actually. One of them... One of them I only see Daryl playing, but the Calibrator I see kind of dangerous based on the, based on how much X Y Z play is is played around right now. For those for those Doppelplant lovers, Thalia will get a lot of play. Thalia. Thalia will replace your Titanials, and then that fucking Prophecy card. Uh. The Prophecy that will get play. Hmm. 
admittedly, I do have to agree that World of Prophecy is absolutely is absolutely busted. But I don't think it's worthy of the emergency ban that I'm hoping for. Anyway, Miss Bird uh, Causalis. Yes, Mark, that is your cue to actually chime in on what your opinions of it are. That's actually kind of cool. It is. Being a three-star synchro with huge freaking defense for no good reason, I like it. That being said, I think the ally of Justice Causalis was actually cooler. I like it. He, he leaves your opponent... Uh, he could take your opponent's big beta monsters like he would fuck my goddams up. Yes, he would. Except he doesn't have any attack points to do it with. No, but he would set my goddams up to get fucked. Yep. Anyway, next up we have Balmong, fighter of the demon world. Okay, he's named after a weapon. Yes, and he's wielding that weapon too. It's an insector monster. Run away! Is it really an insector monster? No. Oh, okay. Don't fucking scare me like that. <laughs> okay, that's its effects kind of cool. Yes, the uh, the recycle the recycling of himself is actually pretty awesome, but the fact that he has to be destroyed by a card effect makes it not nearly as cool. Yeah, he's no colossal fighter. Yeah, colossal fighter. If I'm destroyed by battle, I come back. All right, colossal next fighter. next up is Armadus, Keeper of Illusions. I'm looking forward to the card two cards down from this one. I really am. Ah. Armadus. Mm, oh, look, it's Adrius, except... Synchro. Yeah. I actually really like that. He's got the pitch That's... black... He's got... He doesn't have the full pitch black werewolf effect, which I really don't like, but he's got, he's got enough protection on him to say, Hey, your mirror force don't work. Your magic cylinder don't work. Mind you, he could use with a, a couple more uh, attack and defense points. I could see myself using this guy. Sweet. I could see myself using this guy running into something and then just fucking everything. But dude, it only works after he's. It only works, you know, for his attack. Uh, you need to re be re familiar with what damage step is. Anyway, next up is Psychic Conductor Behemoth. More psychic support. That's that's nice. I, I built a friend a psychic deck recently and I'm I'm hoping this card may actually prove useful to him at some point. It I won't. might add it Okay. Seriously. Then never mind. The nightmare is much better than this guy. Again, this is one of those monsters that sounds really cool and awesome and then you read it and it's no. It has the same damn effect that uh what was it, Divine Knight Ishark had or Lesser Fiend had. And even though it has more attack than both of them it actually won't see nearly as much play as either of them. Which no. is saying something, because nobody runs Ishark or Lesser Fiend. He's got the same attack as Ishark. No, Ishark has 23. I thought Ishark was a 24. No, it's why Ishark isn't running Monarchs, because he's not a Monarch. Ishark's kind of cool, I really liked him. Yes. Alright, and now we come to Xander's favorite card in the set. Oh my god, it's Ghost Parallel Ultra Rare. Star Form Dragon. I am very much enjoying the idea of Star, uh, star Form Dragon, in all honesty. I think that it's getting overhyped. I think that it's really easy to bring out, which is a good thing for a Synchro. Unless, of course, you're, unless of course your name is Goyo Guardian or Bryonic. Go away. Okay, here's what Star Form is. He, he's a... He's... He's... Blah, if I could speak correctly. Today. A light attribute dragon synchro monster with effects, of course. Level 11 with 3200 attack and 2800 defense. He requires a tuner and one or more non tuner monsters, making him the only level 10 or higher monster other than. No. Uh, wait, yeah, other than Malef uh, Malefic Paradox Dragon to not require two or more non tuners. Okay. Here's, here's what Starform does. When he's synchroed, first of all, you cannot negate the summon of this monster. Mm -hmm. And when he's spe uh, when he's special summoned, card effects cannot be activated. And if this card uh, card effects cannot be activated, so when he's special summoned, you can't bottomless or anything like that. He's home free to bring brought up, be brought out of the field. And then also, you can't activate cards when this monster attacks. Yes, which would until be, the which... end of the damage step. Yeah, which is for his attack only. It makes him uh, it makes him immune to a lot of the more commonly played forms of removal, and then you realize that he's still uh, incredibly weak to both uh, compulsory evacuation device and a compulsory escape device. 
Yeah, but not a lot of people think uh, think to run compulse, and if they have, they've compulsed something before you bring out this dragon. Usually, yes. I I could see this dragon getting uh, getting play in in doppel plant builds, just because you can titanium into a junk synchron so easily, and then you've got your star form out to just fucking ruin shit. Hmm. But now we come to the cover card of the set, number C thirty nine, Utopia Ray Victory. I have not actually paid attention to any. I've not paid too much attention to this card. Yes, I have played it a couple times, mm. and it was it was very very annoying to deal with. In all honesty, you know what? I like that a lot of our new monsters are getting the yo. Your opponent can't respond to the attacks the attacks anymore. I like that our boss monsters are having that. I don't like it being splashed around haphazardly. Utopia didn't need that. Yes, you may, they're basically making this they're basically making Ray Victory invincible if you bring him out because of all his support that he's getting this pack too. Oh look, V Salamander, I win. V Salamander and then you top that 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 Chimera cloak on top of it too for some extra pain in the ass. He doesn't have any monsters left. Well, uh, I, but yeah, overall Utopia Utopia Ray Victory is really cool. I just don't see the need to actually have him. That's my opinion, though. So, next up, we have Fang Sharp Ember, a shark, shark uh, Sazer, which is actually really cool because it is one of the few monsters that can, that can have variable Ixies materials. Fang Shark Ember, Shark Sazer. That name is just weird. It is a very weird name, but I love this guy specifically because he's got uh, variable materials. That makes him very, very powerful. And to be honest. I would easily sink into this over Leviathan Dragon if I had Kagamusha Knight to go along with it. Want to know why? Ow! Yeah. Imagine that if I actually got all five level three monsters on it, discarded, uh, uh, dis well, you can't discard them all, which is sad, but I wanted to. No, but the show, this card, if you can defend it, literally becomes God. Uh, not quite, God. I mean, we've got we still have Armatile the Chaos Phantom, which comes out stronger than this thing. Well, I mean, this card becomes God unless you hit it with something that's an effect. Yeah, it, you can still take it down with card effects. So, because if, if this a card lets itself go through, you're you're being uh, at maximum. This card can come at you with sixty eight hundred attack points. Yep, freaking awesome. Now that's moving on, Radiant Light evil. Emperor Galaxion. I, I actually want to play... I might actually run that as a rank 3. I... Of all... I, I have a deep hatred for XYZs. Or a personal grudge against them. And I might actually consider running that card. Anyway. We have the brother to uh, Photo Knight Paladynamo. Seriously, that's what he is. He's the brother. You can tell from his artwork and his stats. Mm -hmm. However... Uh... Whereas Photon Knight Paladynamo did not require Photon Monsters, Radiant Knight Ex Emperor G Galaxion not only requires Photon Monsters, he is pretty much a Photon Monster in himself. That is not nice. I don't like free summon or free special summons for Photon Eyes or Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. I really don't. Yeah, but he's not that big a threat, really. I mean, you can you can still counter Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. I know, but I just don't like the fact that they can willy-nilly special summon stuff like that. Ah, uh, I suppose. Anyway, up next is Garbage Eyes, Garbage Eyes Fat Dragon. It's a mechanical version of Hundred of Hundred Eyes Dragon. Oh, that I fucking hate Infernities. Well, you're gonna hate this even more because it's a uh, it's a rank eight machine Ixies. This oh. is the boss of the Super Defense Robo Monsters. Oh, I don't like this crap. Go away. I don't like anything that, that is remotely similar to Hunter Die Dragon. Except it's not really. Its effects are fa are vastly different. Alright, what Garbage Eyes Fat Dragon really, really does is he's a recycler that, um, well, you don't really want to try and abuse that often. Uh, he can get up to four. He can get up to five thousand attack with his effects. But if you do that and he's destroyed, then you don't get the. Then you don't get to SS anything, especially himself. That's the thing. Wow. 
while he has at least one Ixies material, he can continually come back. So that's the point of trying to use him. He's a pretty big beater, and he can recycle himself. I oh, think he's yeah, pretty cool personally, but I'm not going to run fighter. him. Yeah, we have another. We have an X X Y Z Colossal Fighter. Yes, except this one is actually even better because he comes out stronger than Colossal Fighter realistically can. Okay, this this princess whose name I can't pronounce. Uh, Ryota Harpuya. I really kind of I do kind of like the artwork for some of the cards in Law uh, in Judgment of Light. Yes, a lot of the artworks are actually really nice. Although Garbage Fat Dragon looks freaking hideous, but oh well. Um, uh, I don't really like this thing's effect in all that, in all honesty. A detach to make a monster attack zero is meh. It's meh, I'll grant, but it actually is still pretty cool, and she's technically part of another archetype, so, you know, we, we can let her slide. I, or at least And I the can. fact that she requires Wing Beast on top of that is a little bit more annoying. Now only slightly. But next up we have the boss of the Holy Lightning archetype, the glorious Halo! I don't like the Halo games. Now... Here is the thing. In order to bring out Glorious Halo, you have to have three level four light monsters, which isn't actually that hard to do. But if you're gonna go in, but if you're gonna try and do this with the Holy Lightning monsters, you have to open with wings, book, and sword all at the same time. And then you have to discard a spell to SS Sword. So you've already used four cards to bring him out. And for this effect, uh yeah, this effect is not that good. Yeah. I'm really not impressed with most of the stuff in Judgment of the Light. Same. I, I've seen a total of three car uh, four cards that I actually find remotely dangerous to me. Mm. And one of the and uh, two of them I intend to use <laughs> at some point. Alright. Up next is Master Key Beetle, number 66. I really like the design on this guy, and I also like that he is a Dark Xyz without being a Chaos Xyz, you know? He reminds me of a uh, Hercules Beetle from way, way, way back. This is because he's technically Hercules Beetle. Oh, he's... I, I really enjoyed Hercules Beetle. Brings back memories of, of the False Spawn Kingdom. Master Key Beetle has got the protection effect that North Wemco's got, which makes him actually pretty easy to keep on the field. The thing is, meh? Other than his 2500 attack, there's not really much else we can really comment on. Yes, yeah. he looks beautiful, but that's beautiful all he's got going. Beautiful doesn't win games. I'm sorry, but beautiful doesn't win Yu Gi Oh games. It doesn't, which is sad. If that were the case, oh god, priest er, prophecies would never lose, because fucking high priestess, dude. <laughs> And Ghost Black Rose, bitch. I love the art for High Priest. I don't give a shit that it's $100 in a boss monster, in all honesty. I just like the artwork. Mm. Alright, next up we have number 104, Masquerade Magician, Shining. Why does it have so many subnames? Okay, so he's got a burn effect, and he negates effects. That's kind of cool. Yes, he's, he's pretty much a photon strike bouncer for those of us that aren't running level 6s. And then he, he's... Okay, his his last and final effect is almost useless. Indeed. And, and yet, and yet it, at the same time, I really like that. I, I like it, yes, because you can once per turn make your opponent lose the top card of their deck, which could end up screwing them over in yeah, the long let's run. Let's assume that your opponent plagued their dark hole because, yes, they, I've done that before. And then, oh, look, I just cost you your dark hole. That's That's not it, though. On top of that... I think it's a bad thing, because if you do it too often, you may set your opponent up to OTK you or some If crap. you do it at all, you're setting up your opponent. It's, it's, the, it's the paradox of milling. Fitting out your opponent's deck should be a really good thing, except it's not. Except for every deck nowadays runs effectively in the damn graveyard. Yeah. So you might, you might as well be tying yourself up and bending yourself over doing stuff like that. But it's here why is why I'm not actually a fan of Masquerade Magician. Number C-104, Masquerade Magician Umbral. Yes, Umbral, sw Masquerade Magician switches archetypes. I don't even know how. I have no idea. Um, For the record, I absolutely love Umbral's final effect, because having your opponent's life points is awesome. Also, sending a random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard, freaking awesome. 
but he has to have Masquerade Magician Shining attached to him as an Ixies material, which means you got to bring out Shining, then use one of the two rank-up cards that we've got, and hope to God it works. There's a lot of opportunities to counter this particular play. But if you, it's one of those dogma kind of things. You can counter it, but if you don't, it can be catastrophic. Very catastrophic. But is it? Yeah, it's dogma that has life points. Yes, there are plenty of effects that have life points, but dogma is the uh, most go-to one. War God Emperor. Yep. Here we go. The War God Emperor Susano. I absolutely love the artwork for this. Yes, and I love that he is a reference to Azura Priest. Woot! The only problem that I really have with Susano is that he requires the War God monsters, which, as we have as as we have examined, are work much better in the graveyard than they do on the field. Yeah, this 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 archetype is broken and shattered into pieces. It's not broken in a bad way. Wait, yeah, I it know. Is. It, it, it's broken in, in the bad way that's not good. Yes, as in, you know, it's this just doesn't have really any good chance of being competitive. Susano is an amazing monster, yes, but he's too small. He's got really good support, yes, but he's too difficult to bring out. Well, we're getting, we're getting there. We're all, uh, a little over halfway through the card list. Uh, we're more than halfway through the card list, dude. It's 80 cards. Herald of Sacred Light, the word, the word Herald disgusts me. Because it is, in fact, a Herald monster. Yay! Can't you see how it's a Herald monster? Yes, don't remind me, I fucking hate that build. Oh, come on, why does everyone hate on the Heralds? I just don't like it, I, I don't like, there are certain decks I won't play just because they're no, I get no fun out of it. If I know somebody's going to bring out a boss monster that makes it so I can't do anything, the deck's not even worth playing. That, at least that's the way I feel about it. And Herald's one of those decks. It's I just like, it's But just for like, the record, Herald of Sacred Light's got nothing on Perfect. Yeah, I know. Now, for one, it's got Monster Reincarnation. Except even Monster Reincarnation is far superior because it doesn't cost your card to go back into your deck. Um, and it is way too small. If this had 2,000 defense and maybe 1,000 attack, I could see it being used, but... At 600 attack and 1,000 defense, it's just dying to have to have itself, you know, run over by everything. A marauding captain could walk in and step on it. Yes. Anyway, we're finally getting into the spell and trap card section. Yay! Wake up magic. Yep. This is the second rank up spell card that we've gotten. Th this strikes Utopia away special summons easy. Yes. This also makes it so that you can uh, SS Umbral. Nice. So this that card's ba er, there for Utopia Ray and Umbral. Not yes. bad. It's nice to see an actual way to bring it out, because I thought they were just, you know, expecting us to wing it. No, they're not. Sad. You're supposed to use the rank up magic either Brian or Numeron. Numeron I think I like better than Brian, but I don't really remember what Brian does offhand. Numeron negates the effects of all cards currently face up on the field except the monster special summoned. So, if your opponent's got a bunch of continuous spells and traps that you want to, like, totally ignore, boom, all of a sudden, oh look, I have God Monster. Well, there's a free XYZ. Ixie's Reception. Card. Our next spell card is a free XYZ, uh, XYZ summon. No, it's not. It's still technically a minus zero. Because... Uh, a minus two, rather. Because you have to have a monster you control, you have to use this card, and then you have to special summon a monster with the same level from your hand. So, yeah. You use three cards in order to get out an Ixie. It's not free. I will grant that, you know, Ixie's Reception actually has some pretty cool artwork on it, and it's a reference to Medulce's, who should be getting more support, but aren't. Yeah, fair. considering you run over Medulce's spell... Fire Fist and Medulces are both the same in the sense that you run over the spell and trap card support and they're toast. Yeah, pretty much. But I like Medulce so much. Oh, we're getting a field spell. We're getting multiple field spells, by the way. Anyway, Ancient Battlefield of the Different Dimension, Sargasso. This is a card from the anime. We're getting it, yes. But, um, I see nobody ever trying to use this. It isn't even good against Ixie's monsters, okay? Here's what it does. When a player Ixie summons a monster, that player takes 500 damage. Already, 
it is anti-meta up the yang. But during each end phase, if the turn player controls an Ixyz monster, that player takes 500 damage. Again, anti-meta up the yang. Problem? 500 damage is not nearly enough for it to actually go through that well. Especially since, you know, at most, you're going to get maybe 1,000 to 1,500 points of damage before it leaves the field. Now, while 1,500 damage is nothing to scoff at, it's 1,500 damage over three turns. Wait, don't they take 1,000 because if they still control at the end phase? They yeah. They take 500 too, so they take 1,000 a turn? If, no, if it manages it, to it's not 1,000 a turn, it's 500 a turn. Ooh, that's disgusting. It's 1,000 on the first turn, and then, you know, and then 500 for every turn after that. It's just not that, it's just not that good. Much like Lighthouse, actually. So, uh, Sargasso's Lighthouse. Yeah, Sargasso's Lighthouse is meant to actually be used with the meta because I don't know. I don't... Like I said, I'm not having any hope for Judgment of Light, really. Other than Starform and Thalia, at least. Thalia and that fucking prophecy card. Yeah. In all honesty, I forgot, I'd forgotten... Okay... After we've gone over Starform, Starform goes on my list of things that I, I pose, I think may pose a cool threat to me, or be used by me. The, the thing is, I'm almost 100% convinced that that Prophecy card is going to be the money card of the set. Would make sense, give it, given its stance and what R-Type it's supporting. Anyway, getting back to Lighthouse, it's a searcher, it's a searcher for the field spell, except you're not supposed to use it as a searcher. And, well, while it's in your graveyard, you don't take effect from the field spell. That would be okay, except it requires you to run doubles or triples of this card for it to go off. Ugh. I realized something, Mr. Gurdett. What? According to this, this, this thing, this pack is getting no secrets. Uh, again, this is the OCG print, okay? We don't okay. know about the TCG equivalent of uh, how they're going to screw over the rarities. Do you think that Prophecy is actually going to get, uh, is going to be a secret? I'm convinced it's going to be. Uh, I will wait until we figure out what they're doing with, uh, what they're doing with Judgment Day before I m start making my guesses. Because Judgment Day better not go above base rare. I'm, me and, me and... Jonah are convinced that it's going to be a secret. They, it better not be a secret. That will skyrocket the price of the deck when it doesn't need to go any goddamn higher. I, I've made it clear to Jonah already that, that spellbooks or prophecies are already the most expensive deck out there. Yes. By leagues and bounds. Jo Jonah tried to argue Mermails and then I was just like, um, the only money card, real money card is Megalo. Yeah. And for three megamo megalo right now, which is about three hundred three hundred and fifty bucks. No, megalo's dropping. Makes sense. You're you're looking at two forty or less. Sweet. Anyway, moving on because we need to keep going or else we won't finish. Yeah. All right. War God Advent, another card for the War God archetype. To be clear here, I do like the War God archetype. I like that it's not nearly as derpy as the other archetypes that we've gotten. But all yep. this stuff is just underwhelming. Uh-huh. Like I said, most of this pack is completely and utterly useless. Yeah, I could see War God Advent seeing use in the War God build. And maybe even Her uh, Heraldy, the Heraldy build. There are no support for Heraldy anymore. Heraldy is done. Yup. And what really pisses me off, what really pisses me off, guys, Hazy Flame, which came out for one booster pack, got a TCG exclusive and no other support. <coughs> I really liked that archetype, and then it's just gone. Hazy Flame's cool. I, I, I do very much enjoy that deck, even though I fucking appall the fact that you can't target it with anything. Yes. All right. Now, before I continue ranting, Vertical Landing, more Mecha Phantom Beast support. Um, I hate this card. I don't see a reason for this card to have been made, and this card just doesn't really go in with the, the style that I was familiar with, with a Mecha Phantom Beast. Yeah. Adding Burst into the Mecha Phantom Beast would be cool, except then Vertical Landing comes along and says, Oh, wait, you wanted Burst? No, this dark archetype isn't about Burst, except for all the cards where it is about Burst. Yeah, this... I'm very much... 
looking at uh originally i was looking forward to judgment of light now that I've, i'm actually doing a, a run through of the of the cards and my opinions of them i almost guarantee i will never put a single dime into this pack because there's just really nothing here there's a, quite a few really cool cards there are except the really cool cards that are in here are either really easy to get or impossible to get at this point, this is my prediction already, and I'm not even fully through this pack. I'm convinced that the players will go through and buy what they need from the pack and then just leave it alone. Yeah, but that's how all the packs have been recently. Uh, actually, no. A lot of the players have actually bought boxes of, of the newer packs because you had a chance of making your money back out of them. Uh. The issue with this box is, and I'm going to make a prediction already that when this box comes out... Jonah's going to go and try and buy boxes of this, trying to get that prophecy card, and is going to waste a lot of money trying to do it. Probably. If you think about it, Jonah spent, or Jonah bought three boxes of, of uh, Return of the Duelist. So that, those are $70 a piece, and didn't get a single priestess. So can we continue now? Yes. Yes, we can. All right. Our next spell card is Fire Formation Yoko, which features Deer and Boar. Yeah, again, which are mostly man. Boar being a recruiter is really cool. Deer being a pseudo recruiter would be cool if it wasn't pseudo. But um, Yoko, I see as being control, except it, it requires a discard. And uh, uh, I like how Fire Fists are a control build. I do. But I don't see Yoko seeing any play at all. This pack is putting me to sleep. I'm not going to lie. No, I, I, no. I got really excited for a couple of things, and then the rest of it's disgusting. Okay, maybe this will help you out. We have yet another field spell. Archfiend Palace, the Labyrinth of Fiends. Yay! Oh, yay, we get Archfiend support. We yep. get an Archfield. Are we really getting an Archfiend field spell that isn't Pandemonium? Yeah. <coughs> Sadly, this, this, this card is going to be almost useless. Yes. Because even though it gives a, a pretty decent bonus to your fiend type monsters, it's a fi it's a field wide bonus. So dark worlds get the bonus too, even though they're just going to replace it with uh, gateway. My biggest issue with this is the only reason pandemonium was useful is because you didn't get all that negative damage crap. Well, there was that, and then you and then you know if your archings were destroyed by battle, you could recruit a lower one out. The, the, this field spell helps no, uh, only really is useful and helps the newer Archfiend support. Uh, not really. Because I'm looking at this, and um, it's a once per turn effect that allows you to banish a fiend type monster you control, except, except the Archfiend that you target beforehand, and then you can special summon a, an Archfiend of the same level as the target. Uh, as that target from your hand deck or graveyard, you're supposed. You're, what you're supposed to do with palace is bring out empress. Is uh, bring out empress, sacrifice cavalry in order to go into uh, in order to go into general or uh, genesis. And empress and genesis are meh. Just a whole bunch of meh. That whole build is kind of meh. Yes, but I was so hoping, so very hoping. That it would actually get something that would make it fun to play? Yes. Anyway, our next spell card, Trans Turn. There's, there have been quite a, uh, quite a small amount of uproar for this because it's actually pretty powerful. What Trans Turn does is it allows you to send a monster you control to the graveyard in order to special summon one monster from your deck with the same attribute and type as the sent monster, but one level higher. What, re what people are really trying to use Trans Turn for is, bring back, is bringing back Infernities. Oh, fuck me. Uh, come on, Mark. You see it, don't you? Bring out Necromancer. Ne Necromancer's effect to bring out something else. Trans turn into, into, into Inferno the Archfiend. All of a sudden, I have all of the plays. Yes, don't make me remember Infernities. I really did not like that build all that much. They're not technically dead yet, though. They're actually still pretty powerful. Yeah, but they don't see play. Uh, for the most part. No, there's no for the most part. I see one Infernity deck a month, if even. So yeah, for the most part, they don't see play. Burke still actually has his old Infernities built and is uh, loving them to pieces. Yeah, anyway, Burke next we have it. Black and White Wave. This card, I want to say is cool. I do. 
and then I realized that the only reason this exists is to power up Ar um, Arma Armatus and make him into Adrius. Yep's. I'm really disappointed. If you can get Black and White Wave to go off, it's fucking awesome. It really is. Getting it off, however, is worth is way, way too much effort. Girl! Yes? I'm so disappointed with this pack. It's not even funny. Well, we've only got 11 cards left, so you can keep you can keep at it, dude. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll push through for your sake and for the sake of this, this video. Oh, look, we got a, another one of those pot of uh, pot type deal thingies. Yes, point purchase. I hate this card. I do. Because this is the card that pretty much make it, it's an I lose button. It is. Except when it isn't. The whole problem with this card is that, well, you can do almost everything with it. Uh, I could see this card actually being useful for something, although uh, the big issue is the deck I could see them making uh, making plays out of this doesn't actually need it. And what deck do you think could use it? I think Dark Worlds could, if it weren't for the fact that they had lack of spell and traps. And the fact that they actually prefer their monsters in their graveyard, as opposed to Banished. Yes, but it allows you to grab it. Uh, you don't need Graph in your hand, you need them in your grave, remember? Oh, yeah. Yep, point, card's pointless. It's not pointless, because it can get you, it gets you access to any monster in your deck, which is very, very powerful. It has an it has an appropriate cost for being able to add any monster. The no, problem is most of the monsters uh, that you want to add with it, you can add in other ways. I've got a I've got a point for it. What? I just thought of this. Okay, your opponent's about to win on his next turn. Has enough attack points to kill you. Okay. You trigger that point purchase, sack the sack the three spell or traps that aren't gonna help you in your hand and grab a battle fader. <laughs> and then your opponent is like um, double Xero got him, uh, sacrificing full helm knight. I win. Um, the only, there's not many, other than saber users, you're not going to find much issue with Gotham's. Yeah, true. No, then there's just like Spirit Reaper. Spirit Reaper doesn't work if you've got, if you've got Fader in your hand, you know that. Anyway, oh, yeah. next up, Reverse Glasses. I really like this card. I do. But... I don't really see me ever trying to use it. Um, I like this card just because it sets you up to do some massive damage. It does. And at the same time, I really don't like it simply because I never see myself using it. I like I... for what it can do and for what it might be able to accomplish at some point, but I'm never going to use it. I might consider using this just because... When I when I'm about to explode, everything's usually in my hand. Right. So I just reverse glass, fuck their field to hell, and then come in with my bogarts and full trolls and everything, and do uh, do some serious damage. Right then. Next up, we have Ixie's Revenge Shuffle. So I like that card too, Daryl. That's one of the cards I actually like in the back of okay, yeah. like five that I do. Okay. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. We have we have a a super powered version of Ixie's Rebirth, except maybe I'm not entirely sure. Kind of, ugh. Okay. It's a powered up Ixie's Rebirth, and yet I have seen no use for this. Yeah. The the whole thing is, if you're gonna use Ixie's Revenge Shuffle, you want to use it on a Utopia. What other mm -hmm. Ixie's monsters are you gonna have in your graveyard? Late game, this would be amazing. It really would. If you survive too late game, you're doing it wrong. Okay. Sin Key Law. Now, I actually really like this card. I do. But I understand that I will never... Well, it's not that I'll never use it. It's that um, I really don't know what I would use it for. Oh, wait. Yeah, I do. I know exactly what I would use this for. I'd use this to get the get rid of the monsters on the field while my bigger monsters can actually attack direct, do some damage. Because you you, you use this on an X Y Z monster, like yeah, you uh, a good play is, is after you buff your Leviathan up once, you just you uh sin key law that. 
Now you have three tokens with 2,500 attack points. And then you, and then you uh, do it once again in order to make it a 3K, and then boom. Problem is the tokens can't attack directly. What I was thinking of is using Slacker Magician with it in order to bring out Beast King Barbaros. No, the the thing is, um, no, you don't want to sack another off you to, uh, Leviathan Dragon. Leviathan, basically, these three tokens are your sweepers to keep everything off the field while your Leviathan does the damage it needs to do. Okay. Because when you de when Leviathan has no X Y Z materials, it can't attack directly. Right. So I could see some use in this card if you if you want to use it as sweeper control. But the the whole reason why this is actually powerful is because your tokens can be really freaking huge. Now, for example, Acid Golem of Destruction says, "I love you," except you can't you can't use it while you have Acid Golem out. Why not? Acid Golem makes it so you can't special summon. Remember? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't like him. I love Acid Golem. I hate him. He's a three thousand bidder that doesn't allow me to special summon. All right, next up is Vayne, Sneer, Sneer of Betrayal. Why do I think I'm going to hate this card? It's Actually, on. I really like this card. I could see this being very effective against Mermails. Mind you, in the event I ever have it, if I ever, if I ever have it against Mermails, I've already lost, so... Yeah, I don't really care for Mermails, in all honesty. A lot of the top two decks in, uh, in this format I don't really care for. Eh, makes sense. But what do you think of Vayne? I I find it kind of cool, but yeah, I don't I don't see much use in it. Mm, I actually really like it. It's one of those cards that I actually want to use. I just probably won't. All right, next up is Sword Manifesting War God. Is this gonna be completely useless? Please say no. No, this is the card that allows you to recycle your uh, your War God vessel effects. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. Yes, it's a pretty nice card for the archetype. But again, the archetype is so lackluster that I'm not entirely sure I want to recycle. Hey, good. At, I have a question for you. When do you think we're gonna get our mini? Uh, because come on, new, uh, come Lord of the Pacquiam, we're getting our big element dragons. When are uh, elemental dragons? When are we getting our mini guys? The mini guys will probably be released. You know what? They might even be releasing the new battle pack that's coming out. That would be kind of cool. It would. I kind of doubt they will, but they might. War God's end. A war god end. Yes. To be huh. honest, it's okay. That's about all we got for it. Yeah. It's pretty much spiritual earth art crew again, except it doesn't allow you to SS from the deck, and is therefore immediately hampered by it. I, I'm really kind of sad about this pack, in all honesty. Uh, the, what about Sonic Boom? The flashy, nice name, Judgment of Light, expect, uh, gave me hope that there would actually be some cool stuff in here. And I'm mostly disappointed. Let's see. Sonic Boom. Double attack. Okay. Piercing. Pierce. Double attack and pierce is nice. Yes. As well as a spell trap immunity. Problem. It's got limited removal on it. Uh, so, in all seriousness, just use limited removal and Royal Decree. Or, or uh, no, you can't. Wait, limit removal. Is limit removal original attack or current attack? Uh, current. Use this and then limit removal. If you're going to lose both your monsters at, at, on the end of the turn, why not? Uh, because limit removal gives all of your monsters the big bonus. Yeah, so what you do is you do this and buff your monster, or double the attack of your monsters because of this, and that gives it immunity, spell and traps, and pierce, and then you limit removal on top of that. Okay, but what Phantom Beast would I want to do that with? Dragasack? That would make Dragasack a 10,400 that can't be targeted by spell or tracks and have pierce. Indeed. And double attack. That's just fucking evil. And if I use a Dragasack's token effect, uh, he's not going to be destroyed, but my tokens are. Oh, you are... God, that is evil. That, that... Uh, again, more evidence that they wanted to turn this into a Blitz archetype after they realized that control archetypes don't sell that well. Oh, hell, hello, wape in a can. <laughs> All right, fascinating trap hole. This, this sounds like more fascinating demon. Yes, it's a fascinating fiend card. Okay, cool. Thoughts? Huh, I would fucking wape the hell out of High Priestess with this. I really would. Mm, I was actually hoping to hit uh, Abyss Megalo, but you have a point. I would 
fucking rape the hell out of Priestess with that. Alright, next up is Ixie's Reversal. Oh look, it's changed control only for it's it's a uh, creature swap only for Ixie's monsters though. No, I don't care. I could like that actually. Yes, you could, but at the same time, no. I really don't care. Especially since it's depicting Vylon de Sigma and Gem Knight Pearl. Why? Yeah, you can't be mad at a card for a, a fucking... I, I'm not mad at the artwork, but I'm mad that it's a very specific creature swap. It's just... Ugh. I like it. Now, hear me out for this reason. This is one of the uh, one of the cards I can actually have a cool opinion on. Okay. Okay. Say you have something like a Gem Knight Pearl on the field. All right. And you're running into that issue, and your opponent is... Uh, you have a Gem Knight Pearl, some full... Tr uh, a Gotham's two f or three full trolls, and you're running into the issue of a, a Zen Mains. I know, guess you could just swing over the Zen Mains, but you swap the pearl for the Zen Mains. Now you have defense on you, and you can just easily swing over and do some serious damage. That Zen Mains being a power card, though. That's not this card being good. That Zen Mains being good. That's me finding a way around Zen Mains. I like that card, actually. Just because of Zen Mains. Mm. Yeah, but that's Zen Mains' fault, not this card. You can Congrats. do the same damn nope. move with Creature Swap. You get another Trap Monster, though. Yes, Shape, Shape Sister. Sister. I love my Trap Monsters. And what's even more powerful? Shape Sister's monster is a tuner. Yes. The only problem with Shape Sister is that you can only activate one per turn. I don't care. I really don't. It's a tuner Trap Monster. I win. <laughs> Congrats! Daryl has now brought his 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 trap deck from the the nineteen ninety six to two thousand like four. <laughs> you do realize that Yu Gi Oh didn't come out come to be until you know two thousand three, right? Technically two thousand one, but our last card, Designator of Armageddon. I love this card's artwork. It is fucking beautiful. Oh yes, I like the card itself. It's the anime effect for Gold Sarcophagus. Do you uh, want Xander doesn't know what the anime effect of Gold Sarcophagus is, is it? Does he? No. no. Gold Sarcophagus' effect allows you to put one card into it in the anime, not the real card, but in the anime. You could put one card into Gold Sarcophagus. Could have been any card in your deck. And if your opponent tried to activate that card, their Gold card was negated. Ah. It's how Yugi. It, it's how Yugi wins the uh, the ceremonial duel between him and Atem. Interesting. He uses he puts Monster Reborn into Gold Sarcophagus, and Atem uses Monster Reborn to try and SS Slifer, but uh, but you know, yes. Gold Shark blocked it. I would do the. I would use this on on cards like Fader. Why you know you know that your opponent isn't running Fader. Oh, not Fader, sorry. Stuff like Baylor, so I don't have to worry about it and crap. Yeah, but none of your effects really activate other than Hyunle. Yeah, I know. Or Mistworm. I've, I've had moments where I lost a duel because they Baylor Mistworm. That's true. Okay. I can see myself Baylor-ing. I don't use Baylor enough to actually care about it. And to block out somebody else's on top of that, that's really funny. I like that card. All I right. may actually run it. So... We have about six to seven cards that Mark, that Xander actually likes in this pack. In all Congrats. seriousness, I have a few more cards in that that I really like. Like I said, I like Sinky Law, Vein Sneer, Betrayal, and Shape Sister. And most of the cards that I really like go anywhere between common and base rare. Um, that does actually play a huge point to me. If they're common and base rare, I feel like I can actually you know attempt to get them. But again, we're going off of the OCG list right now. Um, Mark... Xander has said time and time, uh, time and time again that he does not actually like this pack because it is incredibly underwhelming. And you know what? I agree. The archetypes that we're getting, meh. Just, just a lot of meh. Well, the only thing it's really doing for us is it's giving us a couple trap cards to block out hand effects, which is kind of nice here or there. You, it gave us a way to deal uh, a small way out from Zen mains. If you don't want to spend the time to waste the resources to attack through it, and then it gave Fire Fists and Prophecies more stuff to fucking rape us with. Hey, no, no, no. Fire Fists are not actually doing that well, all things considered. They get their asses handed to them by Prophecies and Mermails all the time. 
Mermails are so, uh, according to what I'm hearing, mermails are, are soon to be a, a, a distant memory. Yes, they are soon to be a distant memory, specifically because they didn't get any support in Tachyon, nor they're getting, nor are they getting any support for uh, in Judgment of the Light, as we saw. Do you want to know what's funny? What? I'm more afraid of the card, or the prophecy card they're getting in Judgment of Light, than I am uh, uh, Spellbook Judgment Day. Uh, I'm not. I still think that Judgment Day is hor is hor horrifically designed and disgustingly overpowered. Uh, World of Prophecy is in fact disgustingly overpowered, but at the very least, it is a slightly more difficult to actually gain advantage with, if just slightly. I I see Judgment Day opening you up for that order. I see some. Uh, I see Judgment Day bringing you in for that freaking. Beat a 2900 monster that we're getting in Judgment of the Light. Yep, it will. I, I'm almost 100% convinced that that's going to be a 50 plus dollar card. Easy. Uh, so, because, that's, what we because, thought, that's what we thought after running through the OCG list for uh, Judgment of the Light. I will post in the description or possibly somewhere in the emptiness that's the video. Because I really hope that I don't have to make an actual video for this. Yeah, uh, I'll post the uh, wiki page for Judgment of the Light so you guys can all... Scroll down with us as we chat. Um, final thoughts, Mr. Mark. Um, I just wanted to, I just want to say sorry for all the negativity about this pack, and I hope you guys actually find some use in it. I just didn't see all that use in it, in all honesty. I personally hope that they don't find much to use in it either, simply because I can't. Um, I've looked through this pack at least twice now, and it's there's just nothing really in here that I care about. I'll admit that there's honesty, some really cool singles in here, but. That's all it's got for me. In all honesty, I'm kind of glad I didn't look at this before. It would have it would have killed this for me. All right. So then, uh, with that, we are out. we are out. Be safe, guys. Yep. Have a nice day, and hope you enjoy the video.